All right guys, Jameson and Alex, today we're coming to you with the third of four subclasses from the Humblewood campaign setting by Hitpoint Press, which they were so kind to send us. Yeah. Today is the Night Domain Cleric. So very thematic, because you, know, you can get an idea already what it's going to be like. If you're new to the channel, what we're going to do is we're going to go through all the abilities gained in the subclass, yes. and we're going to rate it based on its roleplay value, combat value, and overall class synergy based on how the abilities gained in this subclass improve on base class abilities. So, all that being said, uh, again, make sure you guys check out Hitpoint Press, the yeah. Humblewood Bundle, they have these animated spell cards as well, they got the booklet of Big Bads thing that you can subscribe to as well, they have tons of stuff, make sure you check them out. Yeah. Always uh, new stuff coming from them, so make sure yes. you check them out. But, all that being said, we're also doing a giveaway. <gasps> There's always something else. I feel like I'm almost always forgetting something. You are. D&D Beyond Players Bundle. Yes. Like, comment, subscribe to be entered for a chance to win that. All of that being said, we'll jump straight into it. Alex, what do we get? You're a cleric. It means you get free spells because you need more spells. You're a cleric. You don't get many spells. Oh, come on. So, not like warlocks. No, not like <laughs> freaking warlocks. You get their spells back on a short rest? Come on. <laughs> anyway, uh, sleep, veil of dusk, we'll explain in a second, <laughs> darkness, moonbeam, non-detection, globe of twilight, divination, stellar bodies, dream, and seeming, if you count those three fingers I'm holding up, those are three spells unique to this book. And we've got these cool little spell cards. Yes. that come with the bundle that tell you what said spell does. So, Veil of Dusk is a level 1 spell, bonus action, range of 60 feet, concentration up to 10 minutes. You encant towards a creature, cloaking them in shadowy veil of darkness and silence. The target gains plus 1 bonus to their armor class and makes stealth checks with advantage for the duration of the spell. It does both a combat and a non-combat use. Kind of a yep. dual purpose spell there. and Very interesting. Level 3 spell, Globe of Twilight. Again, very cool little spell cards. Casting time of one action, a self, a range of 50 foot radius, uh, 15 feet high, concentration up to 10 minutes. This one is kind of long. <laughs> you, <laughs> you shroud the area surrounding you in a sphere of night sky dotted with miniature stars. Twilight conceals your allies but clearly illuminates your enemies. The area affected by this spell is lightly obscured by magical shadow, which within small constellations softly twinkle. Aside from these stars, only light produced by a spell level 3 or higher can properly illuminate the area inside the sphere. Non-magical light does not function inside the sphere, and all other forms of magical radiance can only produce dim, dim light in a 5-foot space. When you cast this spell, you may designate any number of creatures you can see to be concealed by the supernatural shadows while in the sphere. A concealed creature has advantage on stealth checks when inside the sphere and may attempt to hide at any time. Because the area of spell is lightly obscured, creatures within the spell area have disadvantage on perception checks made to see those outside of it. All other creatures in the area are dazzled by the lights of miniature stars, causing them to have disadvantage on all perception checks in the sphere. When such a creature enters the spell's area for the first time or starts its turn there, it must make a wisdom saving throw and be blinded until the end of its next turn. And the material opponents is a dab of pitch and a bag of glittering sand. The other one had a pitch of soot. So again, no, no crazy components for either right. one of those spells. And finally, we have at level four, Stellar Bodies, a range, and it says special the text because there's cool things in here. Mm -hmm. Casting time of an action duration of one minute. And again, no concentration for this one. You create two small stars that orbit you. They twinkle pleasantly, shedding dim light in a 10-foot radius centered on you. The stars protect you. If a creature within five feet of you hits you with a melee attack, they must make a wisdom saving throw or take 1d8 points of radiant damage for each star orbiting you. Mm -hmm. Once per round on your turn, you may use your action to cause a star to streak toward an enemy, expending it as it explodes in a blinding flash, making a ranged spell attack against an enemy with a, within 120 feet, so plenty of range on him. Yep. It deals 4d8 points of radiant damage on a hit. Target must make a constitution saving throw, be blinded until the start of your next turn. Spell ends when either the duration expires, you fall unconscious, or you've expended all of your stars. And this spell can be cast up at higher levels, uh, and you create an additional star for every two slots above level 4. For each additional star uh, orbiting you, the radius of dim light centered on you increases by 5 feet. So it's kind of like... Um, it scale, meteors. Yeah, and, and, it, and it scales like a spiritual weapon does. you got to get yeah. every two levels actually gives the spell more because it's kind of like that it lasts for turns. So you can basically just take the passive 
reactive damage. Right. Or if you want to start throwing them stars at people for the, the, the shots, you can as well. So again, dual purpose spells. Three that definitely stand out as interesting for sure. Once you get your spells at level one, because you're, your you're a cleric, you get Eye of Twilight. You can see in dim light within 60 feet of you as if it were bright light and in magical or non-magical darkness as if it were only dim light. Can't discern color in the darkness, only shades of gray. When you reach 6th level, because this scales, yes. you can see in dim light within 120 feet as if it were bright light and magical or non-magical darkness as if it were dim light. You can't discern color in darkness, only shades of gray. And then, at 8th level, and then... you can see normally in darkness both magical and non-magical within 120 feet. And so, then... you have to think, too, this is better than dark vision because you're right. seeing normally. Correct. It's, it's not dark vision. It's, yeah, you're just magical it. or non-magical. Right, exactly. Right. And then finally, it gets, more, it gets better. Yes. At 17th level, your eyes are able to see the truth hiding within darkness. You gain the ability to call upon the powers of your deity to grant yourself true sight within 120 foot of you for a number of minutes equal to your wisdom modifier. Your true sight only functions while in conditions of magical or non-magical darkness. Once you've used this feature, you cannot use it again until you finish a long rest. So it's a, it's similar to the sixth level true light true sight spell. Yep. Uh, but it only lasts for a few minutes versus I believe it's an hour it for true an hour. sight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it has to be in darkness as well. So either mm-hmm. you can create darkness and then use true sight, or it could be at nighttime and you use true sight. Yeah. But either way, you're basically getting a a free weak version of true sight. Mm-hmm. So not too shabby. Next up, still at level one because you're a cleric. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have Ward of Shadows. You create a Ward of Divine Shadows to conceal yourself from attacking enemy. When attacked by a creature you can see within 30 feet of you, you can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on the attack roll. A shadow envelops your form. An attacker can't attacker that can't be blinded is immune to this feature. So if it has blind sight or, right. or immune to the blindness effect, uh, then it can't be affected by your ability, which makes sense because you're you know darkness and shadows and all that kind of stuff. Right. Uh, you can use this feature a number of times equal to your wisdom modifier. Good, you're a cleric, and regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. And again, the, I love l- lower level spells like this that actually continue to be useful. Right. As you scale It'll up. Still be good. Giving somebody disadvantage works at level 1 or level 20. Exactly. <laughs> at 20, you're going to need it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then at level 2, you can use your channel divinity to harness the power of night, clouding your vision of your foes in a shroud of darkness. As an action, you present your holy symbol, causing any source of mundane or magical light within 30 feet of you to be extinguished. Additionally, each hostile creature within 30 feet must make a con saving throw. A creature who fails the saving throw is blinded for a number of rounds equal to your cleric level. A creature blinded in this way gets a new saving throw at the end of each of its turns to remove the effect. A creature that has total cover from you is not affected. So just a nice little way to give a blind effect in an area mm-hmm. and put out the light because mm-hmm. you want the darkness with Correct. the abilities you're getting. Correct. And then at level 6 we have improved ward. You can use your Ward of Shadows feature whenever a creature you can see within 30 feet of you attacks a creature besides yourself. So it was just for you, now it's for allies as well. But you will notice here, there is only one Channel Divinity option. Yes. Which the other one does get to, but that's okay. Uh, Because this one will be useful all the time and always in combat. Every single round of combat that there's ever being an attack, it's always useful. (laughs) Unless you're only fighting like a caster in a ranger you know they're only just firing shots from across the right way right Un- unlikely uh for that to be happening a bunch of times anyway uh cool and again you will immediately make best friends with the wizard or sorcerer in your party because they have no health and you're like oh disadvantage on every attack that happens against you sure why not Level 8, you get Veil of Dreams. When you reach 8th level, you gain Mastery over Magical Sleep. When you cast a sleep spell, add your Cleric level to the dice you roll to determine how many hit points of creatures the spell can affect. You may choose the order in which creatures in the spell's area are affected. If the first target chosen has too many hit points to be affected, the spell will instead target the next creature you've chosen that the spell could affect before affecting other targets. Additionally, any creature you put to sleep cannot be woken until the start of your next turn. Otherwise, the sleep spell act acts as normal. So essentially, it's just a sleep, the regular sleep spell on freaking steroids. <laughs> yeah, basically. Because, but to me, the best part about it is if you happen to pick something that's got more hit points than you think it does, yep. you're not wasting the spell. It's right. going to roll over to something else, and it's going to knock that sucker out. Right. 
Um, and again, the they cannot be woken because normally you can take somebody can take an action to try to wake somebody up. And it's like, no, they gonna skip a turn. Yeah, at, at least, least one. Yeah. <laughs> they gonna skip a turn. Right. So that's a uh, that's pretty awesome because yeah. again, that also sc- helps the sp- sleep spell scale later into combat. Because right. so, you know you'll know because even if you're only fighting one thing and he's big and you think you've been beating on him for a turn, you're like, you know what? How much else this guy left? You know, because because that way if you can still throw out that level one sleep spell and it's this amount and he's got more health, it's like, okay, he's still pretty healthy. Let's run. <laughs> you right, know, right. if you, if everybody's kind of low, so you can kind of use it almost as like a a health counter right. for later in games. You know, if you you know not supposed to really know how much health stuff has, you can you know you can kind of ask your DM normally like, hey, what's he looking like? Is he is right. he barely getting along? Is he hurting? But he's still looking okay, kind of thing. You can kind of use this as a hard number, knowing like. Oh, he still got more this health. You unconscious. You about to be, and I'm out of spell slots. We leave it. Yeah. <laughs> so I kind of just thought of that off the top of my head, but that's a very cool way to keep the sleep spell usable. Right. Yeah. Later in campaign. Yes, for sure. And then lastly, we have Creature of the Night at 17th level. You can use your action to activate a supernatural aura of Deep Night. It lasts for one minute, or until you dismiss it using another action. You emit heavily obscuring darkness in a 30-foot radius and lightly obscuring shadows 50 feet beyond that. The darkness and shadows overlap and smother existing sources of light. Only light produced by a ninth level spell or similarly powerful effect can negate the darkness and shadows. Goodness. And the crazy part, enemies within the shadows constantly feel the presence of hungry predators watching them and become frightened as long as they remain inside the affected area. Mm -hmm. Enemies in the darkness are both blinded and frightened for as long as they remain within this area. That's right, son. And um, if you noticed, there's no... Did you see the word saving throw in there anywhere? (laughs) Right, no saving throw. And also, (laughs) (laughs) there's also no limits in number of times you can use this. Nope. It says that you can use it for a minute. Mm Mm-hmm. There you go. Seems pretty good. Take takes your turn, <laughs> but if everything that's within thirty feet of you can't see, yeah, and they're frightened, and so, they can't get any closer to you, they're not hitting you, are they? <laughs> yeah, gonna be a little awkward on there. Definitely a pretty solid uh, capstone ability for that. But all that being said, we'll move straight on into the rating portion of the video. And first up is the role play value. Asterisk, as always, when talking about roleplay value, we're talking about interacting with the world around you, interacting with NPCs, non-combat scenarios, avoiding combat, basically things outside of the initiative order. Not talking about class fantasy, history, lore, background, that's on you as a player. Can't rate you, but we can rate the abilities gained in this subclass and how they improve your potential in those roleplay scenarios. So, all that being said, roleplay. Yes. First of all, not counting this, for the role play score, but it is very thematic with the night theme, which is is cool. But is no bonus points for thematic. If if this had more, like, like some kind of an unarmed strike, things would be bad. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, you're the knight. Right. You were the knight. I mean, it's it's right there in the title. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, I could help myself. <laughs> Anyways, uh, getting the, the the sleep buff. Yes, is actually pretty big, especially for RP because most. NPCs or things like that, barring you know special NPCs who have high stat blocks. Yes, you're going to be able to knock out most of these yes. people or guards or things like that. Things that are happening immune to magical sleep, which do exist, but and it definitely come into play for sure. Uh, and being able to see and interact, have special interactions while in darkness mm-hmm. and not and magical darkness can actually come into play pretty, pretty, uh, pretty well, pretty importantly yeah. sometimes. And also it being actual vision and not dark vision. Can definitely come into play as well. Especially, not to worry about especially perception in checks. RP, yeah. Because like perception checks with, with not being able to see color and darkness and stuff like that with disadvantage for perception. So being able to just see normally it can be a pretty big deal, uh, especially yeah. if you're wanting to be like a scout or something like mm-hmm. that. Um, and then also the spell list is very solid RP spells. I mean, look at that spell list, guys. You're getting sleep, veil of dusk is that new spell which yes. has some some RP in there, darkness. I mean, Moonbeam's a combat spell, but sure. Non-detection, okay. Globe of Twilight, pretty much RP. I mean, the mm-hmm. stealth advantage, stuff like that. Divination, Stellar Bodies is combat. Yeah. But then you have Dream and Seeming. So this yeah. is a very RP-heavy spell list that you're getting on mm-hmm. here as well. So uh, you're not going to have to worry so much about preparing RP spells because you're getting a bunch of them for free. And then, again, almost every ability in this subclass is going to have some form 
of roleplay potential. Yeah, with the exception of your War of Shadows, yeah. Right. So, yeah, there's lots of uh, potency, I would say, in the roleplay department. So we went with actually a four and a half on the roleplay. Very so rare thing for a options. cleric. Right, right. <laughs> Very rare thing for a cleric. And, again, the main thing with that is is almost every single thing on here minus the... The ward. The ward is yep. going to have some form of role play. Mm-hmm. And it's scaling as well, especially with the true sight stuff at the, towards yes. the end. Mm-hmm. Capstone. Moving on to the combat side of things. Um, again, the spell list, as James has said, definitely leans more the RP direction. Of course, sleep can be used technically in combat. Yeah. Um, CC. Yes, it's just a hard CC. Uh, Moonbeam, moon definitely combat based. And st- the stellar body spell I like a lot because it feels like the, uh, the mortar's spell but kind of different because you have this you can use use this retaliatory damage right. or you can fire it off as shots and you can cast it higher if you really want to have access to the yep. extra you know stars or whatever so that it's creates an interesting spell also with the veil of dusk you know giving somebody uh plus one of their armor class cool it's a bonus action so if you really yep. want to give it to yourself or help somebody in the party it's just a bonus action it does help your concentrate uh, does use your concentration right. so that's something to keep in mind of but not a bad thing to have access to level one because you're not know, have a ton of concentration spells starting out at the first couple levels. Not to get to like levels, you know, level three and four spells. You're gonna have a ton of concentration stuff right. uh, as a cleric. Uh, of course, the big thing gonna be that you're gonna be using in combat as often as you feel comfortable doing it. It's gonna be your ward of shadows. Yep. Uh, because once you hit six, you can use it not just for yourself but for anybody in your party just to impose disadvantage on the attack roll. Especially when you've got, you know, if you're fighting just one thing and it's big and it's going to chunk somebody for health, just, you know, your reaction every round needs to be needs to be given on that as opposed to you making one opportunity attack. Because if you're able to force a miss because of that, it does prevent you having to try to heal, use heal spells to heal people in the pack in. Because, uh, again, if you ever played Cleric or Druid or, to a lesser extent, Bard Paladin... Uh, you know what the struggle is like of you can't out heal damage in fifth edition. If you have ways to reduce it ahead of time, prevent it ahead of time altogether, like with this ward, much more efficient and much better for you and everybody else involved. Right. Uh, the rest of your abilities are more really, you know, crowd control based things like, you know, forcing darkness while you can still see uh, blinding people with your channel divinity and your capstone um, and and the fact, the fact your capstone doesn't require a saving throw and you can blind and frighten stuff so they can't try to get to you, uh, you know, with the whole frighten effect and how that works, uh, that's pretty interesting for at the very least. And once you hit 17, which is a long way off, very potent, uh, to be honest. is the only light produced by a ninth level spell or similar powerful effect can right. negate that darkness. And, of course, the buff to your buff to the sleet spell, the fact that it's not ever wasted, uh, and like I said earlier, you can use it as a kind of an interesting little hit point counter to see. And if you do cast it on the biggest thing and it doesn't work and there's other targets, you can roll that over yep. uh, to try to hit the smaller stuff after all. So it makes it more effective and less likely to be wasted. It's a lot of saying. But it, there's not much it's doing for you specifically in combat right. besides just helping you stay alive because of all the crowd control you get access to and your Ward of Shadows. More, more of the... Sp- Spell slots as more of this free spells being RP based. Uh, we went with a three out of a possible five uh, because if you know, if you do come across stuff that's immune to the blind effect, you're right. hurting. Right. That's really what a lot of your stuff is able to do. Is play, or if you're if you're fighting in the broad of day, <laughs> yeah, a lot of your stuff doesn't get to be as effective as it would be in at nighttime. Yeah, minus the capstone. Uh, but yeah, another thing too that you don't want to forget about is it says. With the capstone, you emit heavily obscuring darkness in a 30-foot radius. And if you're not familiar, heavily obscured is like a thick, opaque fog. It'll impact your allies. And mm-hmm. if they're inside that, it's going to give them blinded condition as well. Mm-hmm. So a 30-foot radius around you could be detrimental to your party you as get, well. If you're fighting like in an enclosed space. Right, you could fill up a whole room and yeah. they're, they're all in trouble yep. with that. So yeah, it's something to keep in mind as well. When to use it could be super effective. But also, it could be a hindrance as well to yeah. the rest of the party. You're definitely better in open spaces than in closed areas with right. the way this is set up. Exactly. And it's not until 17 as well. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely uh, interesting on there with the combat. But there's, there's definitely, some, there's definitely some limitations that can exploit and really limit what you can do. Right. And then lastly, we have the overall class synergy. And again, looking at the abilities on here, guys, you, you're getting some, some decent utility on here. 
for your spells, and they are more RP based, which kind of frees up your ability to take some more combat focused spells, mm-hmm. which is is nice to have. The ability with the basically improved vision, I'm not gonna say dark vision because it's better than dark vision. Yes, is can definitely come into play, um, and it can help in specific circumstances. But most of the time, it's not going to make a huge difference between dark vision and just regular vision um, as well. So that's not a major thing. The the benefit for the Ward of Shadows uh, can help maybe save you some spell slots for healing potentially, Mm -hmm. giving people disadvantage on attack rolls uh, to maybe avoid you having to cast a healing spell on them later, Mm -hmm. which is nice to have, but again, nothing super crazy. And there's a limited number of uses you can do that. Yep. And it's a it's per long it's wisdom modifier per long rest. So you're not right. going to just throw them out willy. Yeah, you're not throwing them out all the time. It's, it's not bardic inspiration right. <laughs> for sure. And the sleep spell, it, it, it'll be super helpful early on. I feel like the the higher level you get, the less effective it's going to be, just this because it doesn't the sleep spell doesn't scale the best. Uh, just because as things start getting like 200 health, health, you're never going to be able to put that thing to sleep. Uh, you mm-hmm. can't cast enough, cast it up high enough. You're getting that bonus to the cleric level on top of it is nice. And lets it stay relevant a little bit longer. Yes. But for mid tier to high tier play, it's really going to still be irrelevant most yeah. of the time. Yeah, like I said, at the, once you get past the you know ten plus CR monsters, like I said, it's probably going to be like a hit point calculator. It's like right. okay, we've been beating it, up on this guy for a while. Can I put him to sleep just so we know we've, how how low right. he is? And, and what sort of purpose is going to have? I feel like it kind of like shifts over to being an RP spell as you get higher. Oh level. yeah, almost exclusively. Yeah. And then I get, like I said just a minute ago, with the capstone, it, it could also create a great scenario for you, but could also make combat very difficult for your allies as well. Mm-hmm. So something you have to really be very mindful of in how you use that. So all that being said, we just gave it a flat three as well. You're getting some nice benefits, but also some questionable um, consequences yes. that are tied along with yeah. those and limited uses that keep things in check, I would say, yep. pretty heavily. Yeah, because, I mean... One's geared around Channel Divinity, which you're not using very many times a day. One is your Wizard Modifier per day. Right. Uh, and then one's buffing just one specific spell. And then there's your Capstone, which you can do all the daggum time. But that's not until 17. So from 1 to 17, it's at most five times a day, at most three times a day, buffing the first ability, and then buffing one spell. Yeah. So, yeah. Nothing crazy. Nope. But it is what it is. Yes. But yeah, guys, that is the... Night Domain Cleric. That's mm-hmm. our thoughts on here. Again, thanks to our sponsors, Hit Point Press and the Humblewood campaign setting. Make sure you guys check them out. They have a box set. They got the Riff and the Ash Knight plushie, super soft and cuddly. Uh, they have the animated spell decks. They have the Big Bads, uh, Monster Magazine electronic thing as well. That's, uh, I believe, monthly on there. So there's some cool, lots of cool stuff coming from them, all I'm trying to say. <laughs> so make sure you guys check them out, help mm-hmm. support them, help Absolutely. support us. Uh, definitely a really cool yeah, uh, team of stuff. And the stuff that they make is actually I mean, awesome. I mean, we weren't planning I mean, on covering this at all. No, but look, look at those. These are just basic spell cards, like for the ones that are new to this thing, and they're all like, they're all super, super cool. But yeah, guys, uh, really like these subclasses. we got one more left in the book that yes. we want to cover, and there's some other stuff too, so let us know if you want to see. There's like 10 character options and a bunch of feats and spells and stuff as Bad, well. Yeah, if you want to see that, even in there, yeah. Yeah. if you guys want to see that, let us know in the mm-hmm. comments, and we can do some shorter videos on that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's it for today, guys. If you enjoyed the video, remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you know when the new stuff comes out. And as always, thanks for watching.